Hi everyone. So last time we discussed some tests, the uh, first derivative test for the behavior of hyperbolic equilibria. Um, basically, uh, you'll recall that uh, if f prime of x bar is greater than one, when unstable, and if f prime of x bar is less than one when locally asymptotically stable. And this is, of course, for the case where uh, x, ah, give me a moment, where x sub t plus 1 is equal to f of x sub t. Okay, so this is the hyperbolic case. So, uh, hyperbolic case. where f prime of x bar is not equal to 1. But now, what about the case where f prime of x bar is equal to 1? Uh, the absolute value of it is equal to 1. It turns out that that's a little bit more complicated and we have to look at higher derivatives. So, let's take a look at the case when f prime of x bar is equal to 1. Now, no, we're not actually going to analyze the case, um, not going to analyze the case where it's equal to negative 1, to prime of x bar is equal to negative 1, though it is in the textbook if you want to look at it a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, and I don't really think it gives you that much more intuition for what's going on. But yeah, so now we have that. Let's state our main theorem for... Uh, this case, which is uh, 2.3. Suppose uh, oh, I don't need the absolute value here, since I'm only going to talk about the case where it's actually equal to 1 and not just the absolute value is equal to 1. Where x bar is an equilibrium uh, point of our difference equation, x sub t plus 1 is equal to f of x sub t. And let's suppose that we have a continuous third derivative um, on an open interval, open interval i that contains x bar. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump straight ahead to assuming that we have a um, third derivative that's continuous. Obviously, if it's not continuous, then this theorem doesn't apply, and you have to do uh, even more careful analysis. But if we do have a third derivative, then we can say a couple things. So the first thing is, if f double prime of x bar is not equal to 0, then x bar is unstable. Second, if x, f double prime of x bar is equal to 0, and we know that f triple prime, so the third derivative, is greater than 0, when x bar is unstable. And finally, if f double prime of x bar is equal to 0 and f triple prime of x bar is less than 0, then x bar is locally asymptotically stable. And note that, as I mentioned, we can't say anything about the case uh, where it's equal to negative 1, where the first derivative is equal to the negative 1. We still can't say anything uh, if f prime of x bar is equal to uh, negative 1, or if f prime of x bar is equal to 1, f double prime of x bar is equal to 0, and f triple prime of x bar is equal to 0. So basically, we're carefully analyzing the different cases depending on the, uh, the first, second, and third derivatives. And it turns out that in some cases, well, under certain circumstances, you have to keep on going. And you have to look at even more derivatives and assume that they're continuous, etc. Um, we're not going to go into this in too much detail, but ba the basic idea is 
there are certain values of the derivatives that are sort of on the boundary between stable and unstable. And if that derivative is on the, the boundary, then you have to go look at the next derivative, uh, and so on. Um, I'm not going to fully prove this, but I'm going to give a proof sketch. Um, and we're going to use cobwebbing. So uh, using cobwebbing. So I'm going to give you a visual illustration for why this is true without actually formally proving it. OK, so there are a couple different cases that we have to worry about. And I'm just going to draw out a prototypical case for each. So let's say this case is one where, so in all of these cases, we have f prime of x bar is equal to 1. So c f prime of x bar is equal to 1. And in this first example, we're going to have x double prime of x bar is greater than 0. So if the first derivative is equal to 1, and the second derivative is um, greater than 0, well, that implies that we have uh, a upwards facing parabola, basically. So let me draw this out. So let's see. Let's go ahead and let me use green for this line. So remember, when you're cobwebbing, the first thing you do is you draw out the line y equals x. Uh, and then you, the second thing you do is then you need to draw out um, y equal to f of uh, x. Okay? Now, the f of x here in this particular case is going to look something like, well, we know that the first derivative is equal to 1 at the equilibrium point. And furthermore, where are the equilibria point? The equilibrium point, the, the equilibrium points are precisely where x is equal to f of x, right? So it's going to be a places where the two lines intersect. And uh, since the first derivative is equal to 1, when they intersect, they're just going to touch. Uh, so it might look something like this, uh, where this here is now the point where the, the equilibrium point. So now, how does cobwebbing work? Well, what we have to do is we start at some point, uh, and then we uh, start at an, an arbitrary point close by. Let's say we start here at this point. You go up to the uh, f of x line, and then you go to the right until you hit, or you go to the right or left until you hit the um, uh, y equals x line. So that's going to look something like this. Uh, let me draw that out a little bit better. Actually, let me do this one a little bit further away, so it's a little bit easier to see. Say so I start here, you go up to there, and then you go to, to the right or left until you hit the y equals x line, and then you go up again, uh, or down, uh, as the case may be, and then you go there, and so on. So you know that it gets far away, and so even if you start close to uh, your uh, equilibrium point, you're not actually going to, so for example, if you start here, you end up going there, 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 and there. So even in that case, you still end up uh, going further away. And so this is unstable. OK, and let's see a different one. So that was the case where what happens if it's less than 0? So let's take a look at the case where f double prime of x bar is less than 0. Well, what would we say? We say if it's not equal to 0, then it's unstable. So we know, know already from the theorem that this is going to be unstable, but let's see how this works. So again, I'm going to draw the y equal x line. This is the y equal x line. And here, well, you know the second derivative is less than 0. And um, so you know that this is uh, concave down. So this is uh, looks something like a, uh, locally at least, like an upside down parabola. So let's see, it will look something like uh, that. And that's just locally. So like all sorts of things can happen globally, but we're not going to worry about that uh, for the time being. And so what happens here? Well, we have our equilibrium point there. Uh, and, of course, the first derivative at the equilibrium point is equal to 1, so it uh, is parallel to the y equals x line. And this is the y equal f of x uh, curve. And we can do the same thing. So let's suppose that we start uh, over here. Well, uh, let's see. Let me actually extend this out a bit more. And let's make a little... 
Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your curve, and then you're going to go to the y equals x line, and so on. So that's going to uh, run away. So it's um, what happens if you start a little bit, uh, let's say you start on the other side. Let's start over here. Well, you go up to your curve, you go to your the line, you go down to the curve, uh, you go to your line, you go down, go to your line, you go down, go to the, and so on. And so it still keeps on going away. In fact, no matter what happens, this is going to be unstable, which is what the theorem says. Um, okay, so that's the case where f double prime of x is not equal, of x bar is not equal to zero. Uh, but, of course, our theorem also says something more for when it is equal to zero and gives us, uh, so if it is equal to zero, well, then the second derivative doesn't tell us the stability, and then you have to look at the third derivative. So let's take a look at the third derivative now. So, let's see, let's draw this out. Oh, I should actually follow the line since I decided to turn on grid mode to see them all. Um, okay, so we have the y equals x line again. And so if the, uh, and here we're going to have, uh, let's say, f double prime of x bar is equal to zero, and f triple prime, so the third derivative of x f bar is greater than zero. So this is equations of that, um, so this is a cubic equation, and I'm just going to draw out what this might look like. So this looks like something like, let's say, uh, and of course, it again, uh, oh, I used the wrong color for that, didn't I? Uh, let me do that in purple. So here, again, we have our equilibria, where it barely kisses the line, but since it's a cubic, it actually crosses past it. Um, and if we start, uh, let's see, so what happens? So if we start here, well, we go up to our uh, y equal f of x line. Um, this is our y equal x line. And then when we go up, then we go to our y equal x line, horizontally. And then you go down and away. Etc. So that seems, it looks like it might be unstable. Let's take a look, uh, try again. So let's start, um, say, on the other side. We go there. Well, you go right, but only a tiny bit, but you're still going away from, uh, away from the equilibrium. And so this is unstable again. And finally, there is a case where things are stable. And this is the last remaining case where f double prime of x bar is equal to zero and f triple prime of x bar is less than zero. And so what does this look like? Well, if you draw out the y equal, oh, my, let me try that again. Let's try out the y equal x line. This is the y equal to x line. And then you also have a y equal to f of x line. And if it's less than zero, then your the line actually starts on the other side and kisses it in the other direction. So let's see, this looks something like that. And in this particular case, well, if we start, say, here, you go up, you go to the left, you go down, you go to the left, down to the left, etc. And so that actually does go to our uh, equilibrium point. And if you start over here, uh, you go up, go to the right, etc. And so those do go to the equilibrium points, and so this is uh, locally asymptotically stable. Uh, locally asymptotically stable. And so this isn't a formal proof, but the basic idea is if you're if you have if your derivatives are um, as described here, then if you zoom in close enough, uh, the behavior of your uh, difference equation acts as if it looks like just a simple uh, cubic or simple um, uh, yeah, simple cubic or simple parabola. And this can be all made formal. We're not going to do it in this class because um, it's a little bit messy, but it is something that you should think about and hopefully you understand why this is the case. 
the general intuition that you should take away, though, is that when you have uh, you have the derivative test, but the derivative tests don't tell you anything right on the boundary. So there's some boundary between stability and instability and being unstable. And when you're right on that boundary, then that you need to go to the next derivative effectively to see what goes on. Um, things get even more complicated when you deal with the case where f of f prime of x is equal to negative one. Um, and there's something called the Schwarzschild uh, derivative, which we're not going to actually cover in this class but is useful for those sorts of tests. So it turns out that the tests are slightly more complicated when you have uh, the first derivative equal to negative one. Um, but you have similar tests that you can apply uh, to uh, making use of the higher derivatives. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, let's see an example. We're going to use an example that we saw earlier. This is actually one of the, or sorry, this is an example. This is not an example we've seen earlier. This is actually exercise 2.5a in your textbook. Um, and so let's try to analyze this. So let's suppose that we have x sub t plus 1 is equal to a x sub t cubed plus x sub t, where a is not equal to 0. Well, we know how to compute the equilibria, right? So let's do that. Equilibria. Uh, well, in order to find those, we need to set x is equal to a x cubed plus x. And so the x's cancel out, so you have a x cubed is equal to 0. And since uh, a is not equal to 0, this implies that x is equal to 0 is the only real equilibrium. There are two other complex equilibria, but in this class, because this is a mathematical biology class, and we don't, we don't care as much about the complex solutions, uh, instead we care about the real solutions. And in this particular case, we only have one of them. Okay, and what was our f of x function? Our f of x function was uh, ax cubed plus x. Well, then the first derivative uh, is just equal to uh, 3ax squared plus 1, which implies that the first derivative test uh, at 0 is equal to 1. So unfortunately, this means that we can't uh, say whether it's stable or unstable based off just the first derivative test. So we need more derivatives. Uh, need more derivatives. Okay, so let's take a look at the second derivative. So the second derivative here is f double prime of x is equal to 6ax, which, uh, let's see, what does that give us? f double prime of 0 is equal to 0. So does that help? No, unfortunately. So if it's not equal to 0, then you know that it's unstable. But if it's equal to 0, then uh, you still need more derivatives. So still need more derivatives. Okay, so you still need more derivatives. Well, what's f triple prime of x? Well, that's equal to just 6a, uh, which implies that uh, f triple prime of 0 is equal to 6a, because there isn't an, an x dependence anymore. Therefore, if a is greater than 0, uh, f triple prime of a of 0 is greater than 0. Uh, so 0 is an unstable equilibrium. Uh, and that's based off of this last condition here. If uh, f triple prime is greater than zero, then it's an unstable equilibrium. On the other hand, if a is less than zero, f triple prime of zero is less than zero. Uh, that was a zero there. Is less than zero. So zero is a locally asymptotically stable equilibrium. Okay, um, so now, can we see this? Uh, so, we just applied the theorem layer. We can also see this by directly cobwebbing this particular equation. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, I will expect you to be able to do basic cobwebbing by hand, though, of course, it'll depend on how complicated the functions are. Let's do another cobwebbing illustration for, uh, let's just choose a equal to 1, uh, which is unstable. Well then, uh, what goes on here? So we have our function, uh, and we need to first plot out the y equals x line. y equal x line, and then we need to pull out the y equal f of x line. So y equal f of x, which is equal to, well, if 
a is equal to 1, this is x cubed plus x. So x cubed plus x. Well, let's plot out a few of those points just so we can be sure of where we are. f of 0 is equal to 0, f of 1 is equal to 2, uh, f of minus 1 is also is then equal to a minus 2 because it's an odd function. f of 2 is equal to 10, f of minus 2 is equal to 2 minus 10, and so this is a pretty standard quartic. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I should probably have put the origin closer to the origin. Let me redraw this to make it a little bit nicer. Ah, there. Okay. And then our y equal x line. Graph paper only works if you use the lines. Okay. So, well, we have our zero point here, and then that one, it's at two, and minus one, it's at minus two, uh, and so on. And it goes down to ten pretty quickly, so we're not going to actually redraw that. So this thing looks like this. Okay. And then if we start at a point, let's start pretty close because it's going to run away pretty quickly. So if we start here, it goes up, right, up, right, up, right, and so on. And if we start here, it's going to go down, left, down, left, down, left, down, left, so on. And so uh, you can see directly using cobwebbing that it is unstable by just plotting a couple trajectories of points near your equilibrium, then see if it goes away or if it goes towards your equilibrium. Okay, so that uh, is a little bit about how you would explicitly find these, uh, do a stability analysis in the case where you have non-hyperbolic equilibria where the first derivative is actually equal to 1. Like I said, we're not going to bother with uh, the first derivative equal to minus 1, but we are going to now spend some, some more time on cobwebbing because uh, cobwebbing is a fairly general tool that you can use to visually see the stability of the various um, equilibria without have to, having to actually do all of the uh, derivative tests. And in some cases, uh, that's the only thing you can do because you have super complex behavior. Uh, so, let's give a couple more cobwebbing examples. And I'm going to use one of the examples we showed early, we worked on earlier. So this is example 2.4. Uh, and so this should, you should remember this from both the last set of videos as well as your breakout session problems. This is equal to r minus x sub t squared, uh, and f of x is equal to r minus x squared. So, uh, last time we showed using the quadratic equation that this has two equilibria. Uh, this has two equilibria. Two equilibria, or steady state solutions. Uh, so it's x plus or minus bar uh, is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4r over 2. And uh, last time we also did the analysis that showed that x uh, the this equilibrium is unstable, the minus 1, minus 1 minus the square root of 1 plus 4r over 2 uh, is unstable uh, since f prime of x is equal to minus 2x, so f prime of x minus bar is greater than yeah. is greater than uh, 1. And you'll see that if you plug it in uh, for any r. Uh, now, on the other hand, we showed last time that x of uh, the positive equilibrium, well, the equilibrium where you take minus 1 plus the square root of 1 plus rc over 2 is stable, um, locally asymptotically stable locally asymptotically stable if r is less than three quarters and unstable if r is greater than three quarters. Again, just by using the first derivative test. And now let's look at these two via cobwebbing. So um, let's explicitly plot this out. Plot this out via cobwebbing uh, when r is equal to 1 half. So when r is equal to 1 half, we have x, the positive equilibrium is equal to minus 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2. 
Uh, and of course, the square root of 3 is about 1.7, so minus 1 plus 1.7, that's about 0.7. Uh, oh, divide by 2 is about 0.35. Um, if you actually use a calculator, you'll find that this is about 0.366. And the negative equilibrium uh, is going to be minus 1 minus the, uh, the square root of 3 over 2, and that's going to be about minus 1.366. Okay, so now let's draw it out. Um, I'm going to give myself plenty of space on this one, uh, since I want to be able to see this one clearly. And there. And I'm going to give myself plenty of space for my ones and twos. So I'm going to say that lat is one. So four of these lots is one. Uh, let's see, this is minus one and one, two, three, four. Lat is minus one. Okay. And the first step is easy. You just need to plot out the y equals x line. So let's just this diagonal line here. Okay. And the next, you need to plot out a couple points, right, for your f of x curve. So f of x is equal to 1 half minus x squared. And of course, this is uh, an even function, so it's going to be the same on the right and left hand side of uh, the zero of the vertical axis. So f of zero is equal to, uh, let me put this in purple actually, since that's the color I'm going to draw the curve in. So f of zero is going to be one half. Well, that's easy, right? Uh, let's see, f of one quarter is going to be equal to, well, what's one quarter? That's a one over one half minus one sixteenth. So that's eight sixteenths minus one sixteenth. And so that's seven over sixteen. Uh, f of one half, well, that's equal to one half minus one fourth, which is just one fourth. Uh, f of three quarters, uh, well, what's that equal to? Uh, three quarters, uh, square lat, that's nine over sixteen. So eight over sixteen minus nine over sixteen is minus uh, one over sixteen, and so on. Uh, and of course, so, the, so let's plot those out. So this here, uh, zero, that's one half there. And at one quarter, that is going to be uh, 7 over 16, which is just under a half. So let's write around, let's say, there. Uh, one half is one quarter, so let's write there. Actually, I think that's slightly further down. Uh, and of course, we have plotted symmetrically on the other side. Three quarters is minus 1 16th, so let's write around there. And uh, let's actually do 1 as well. So f of 1 is equal to, well, uh, 1 squared is 1, so 1 half minus 1 is minus 1 half. So that goes to there and there. Um, and let's go ahead and plot the, uh, figure out what f, uh, and let me just add an, another one. So f of 1 half, 1 over the square root of 2, um, is equal to 0. So this is uh, 0 0.707. Uh, so that point is, right, is that, that's the intersection points. So those are around there and there. Uh, and let's see, we also have the, you also know one other thing, which is that our two equilibria here those are precisely where you intersect the. Um, those are precisely where you intersect the y equals x line uh, because they're equilibria. So you have the point three six six there. So that's your uh, x sub positive bar. Uh, let me put that in a different color actually. So let me put that in blue. So that's your x sub positive bar, and you have another one down here minus one point three six six. That's actually down here roughly. So that's my uh, x negative bar. Okay, so now we can draw out this parabola. Okay, and so that is our y equal f of x line, and this here is our y equal x line. And now we can see what happens. So suppose I start, say, let's suppose I start down here. Okay, let's do this in red. So I'm actually starting near the, 
Oh, sorry, let me, you can't see the x minus bar there. But I'm going to start pretty close to the um, negative uh, equilibrium. So I go down to the, this line here. Well, then I go to the right. So I'm already going away from our equilibrium. That's not good. I'm clearly not limiting towards it. Uh, well, this goes back up here to the right, goes up, and I end up going here, actually, going up. Uh, and this is actually a bit of an issue because there actually isn't anywhere else I can... Wait, sorry, I think I did... Some... Ah, no, I did that wrong here. So, you notice, what did I do wrong here? What I did wrong here was I continued this line all the way to, to the right to our y equals f of x line. Instead, I was supposed to stop it um, at the y equals x line, and so that's why things went horribly wrong there. So there, well, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, and then you go up or down, so you go vertically to your y equals f of x line, and you go to the right, go down, to the right, go up, go right, go down, and uh, you'll see that that actually does limit to the um, positive um, equilibrium. And so this here is stable, and this here is unstable. Okay, and uh, so yeah, as you can see, cobwebbing is a lot more powerful when it comes to, or a lot more useful when it comes to the nonlinear um, first order difference equations, because you can see this sort of uh, analysis even without necessarily going in and using the various derivative tests that we've talked about or using the higher order techniques that we haven't talked about. Instead, you can just plot it uh, in Python or something and then see what happens. Now, it turns out that you can do this with periodic solutions as well. So, um, cobwebbing and periodic solutions. So, now recall that Uh, x sub t plus 1 is equal to r minus x squared also has a 2 cycle, which is stable uh, if r is between 3 quarters and 5 fourths. So that was one of your uh, breakout problem exercises, I think. And we can see this by cobwebbing. So we can see this by cobwebbing. And there are two different ways that you can see this. Uh, so, um, one, uh, the cobwebbing uh, might just, uh, ordinary cobwebbing, let's say. So, ordinary cobwebbing, right. ordinary cobwebbing, um, by plotting y equal x and y equals f of x might show an alternating between the two. But this won't always work because if you're if you, if you have an unstable two cycle, well, then what happens is you go away from it very quickly and you don't really see the sort of back and forth motion uh, at the actual cycle itself unless you start on it. Um, however, what you can do instead is you can also uh, see it via uh, cobwebbing of y equal x, and instead we are going to use y equal f of f of x. So remember that the two cycles, uh, the um, periodic solutions of order two, are precisely the equilibria solutions of f of f of x. And so if we do that instead, then we can do the exact same analysis uh, of it um, as an equilibrium point, and then we'll see whether it's stable or not. And just for reference, uh, I'm going to say the two cycles, um, I recall the two cycle is at uh, x12 bar, which is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 4r minus 3 over 2. And we're going to let r be equal to 0, and then x12 bar is equal to 0, 1. And so 
let's go to Python and see what happens from there.